Hello and welcome back to Let's Play Planet Coaster here on Theme Park Worldwide. In the last episode we completed our Wild West area and also showed POVs of all the attractions in there as well. So if you want to take a ride on things such as the Log Flume, our Frisbee and also our Top Spin as well, make sure you check out the last episode where you can do just that. Now I did mention that we're going to start building a brand new area in this episode and that's literally what I'm going to kick straight in and do right now. So I have had a bit of a decision about what roller coaster we're going to put in. I did mention it in the the last episode, I've read quite a few of your comments, and it was either going to be a flawless coaster or a wing coaster in the end. What I'm doing, I'm going for a launched wing coaster for this one, so this should be quite interesting. Of course, manufactured by BM, a brilliant quality manufacturer. Of course, this over here is an RMC, a hybrid coaster, a bit more of a, a modern, if you like, manufacturer. They, they've come around quite recently in the past few years, whereas with the BM, they've been going for years, they've done a lot of fantastic quality attractions, uh, and this is going to be one of their wing coasters. It's actually their latest prototype from B&M and we've got the Swarm of Thought Park here in the UK. That's one of my favourite coasters uh, in this country. I absolutely love it. So anyway, let's think about the positioning for this. I don't want it to be too close to this Wild West area. I don't want it to impact. Like you're walking down here and you see it right behind. I mean, I don't mind seeing it in the distance, but I don't want to say build it there and then you have the, the coaster right behind it. It's all about positioning to make your Planet Coaster Park look good. So let's think about where I'm going to place it. I'm thinking a bit further back, sort of around around this sort of angle, so it'll go in this sort of corner here. Let's put the station in about there, I think, so. Let's have a little look in. I'm gonna raise the platform up a bit here as well, so. Let's go for about there. That'll do. There we go. So we're going to raise this up a little bit. So you can see the little launch sections there. So this uses LSM launch. And of course, if you've got any utility settings down here, you can see the target speed, which at the moment is 60 miles per hour, the acceleration rate, which is seven meters per second squared, and an option to add a catwalk in there as well, if you do want to. So let's put these launch sections in. Of course, we can change that if we want to. Yeah, I think that's about the right sort of launch and then we're going to go into an inversion. I'm thinking maybe a, a sidewinder or something like that would work quite well in this section. So let's have a little look at what loops we've actually got. So sidewinder to the left, that's really going the wrong way but I do like that inversion on a wing coaster. I think that would look good actually launching out towards that angle. I mean I've got quite a few big ideas for the terrain and things around this and with it being a pirate themed area we're going to be putting in, you know, quite a, a good sort of theme to go for I think for a wing coaster. So. Let's think about the actual size we want to go for. That's quite small. Let's raise this up a bit. That looks a bit more like it. I quite like that, actually. Yeah, let's go for that. Like I say, we're going to test this coaster as it's going to sort of see how how it runs and things. So what's that, 39 metres? Yeah, about 40 metres is about the sort of highest I wanted to go for with this rear. I don't want it to be too massive, but I didn't want it to be too small either, really. That looks cool, so we'll go along and just make sure this is uh, nice and smooth as well with this one. I will use the smoothing tool. I know this is pretty much a preset inversion, but you have the smooth all or the smooth the banking. So I know there's not really any banking there, but that just gives you an example of, of what we can do later on in the coaster to help smoothen it off. So let's think about where we're going next. So what height? We've got nine metres on this. So what, let's have a little mess about with the actual launch, shall we, and just see how... Uh, how this is going to work. I do like the idea around the catwalk though, which you can add around the track where you want to if you do mid-course brake runs, that kind of thing. Okay, let's uh, let's test it and let's just see what happens so far. So we've got, what, 60 miles per hour launch. That should be fast enough really to make it up. That's actually a really good speed. We'll leave it as it is then for now. Let's, uh, oh, there we go, we had a bit, of a bit of a crash over there, a bit of a collision. Yeah, let's go back to edit that. I'm clicking the end of the track like I used to do in Roller Coaster Tycoon. Even though I'm, what, seven episodes in, I still do some of my old RCT2 habits. Should we go straight into another inversion? I mean, what we could, oh, we could go into a dive loop. That's sort of going the wrong way towards the park perimeter. Don't really want that. Well, back to the left. Now, that looks better because obviously it's going to send the coaster down this sort of angle. Let's think about the height. I think that's not going to make it that well. I know that's not going to make it. Let's um, put that in. The good thing about testing the coast whilst you do it is you can sort of see the speed that it goes. That's quite nice for a wing coast. So we could probably actually get away with a little bit more height on that with how fast it is coming around. 
36. So 39 meters down to nine, up to 36. We can do some really good theming work around here. Instead of just having sort of rock work around this, I've got plans for quite a lot of buildings. It's going to interact quite a lot. That's nice. So what I'm thinking for the next section of track is we maybe go for an incline loop. I mean, bringing the coaster around this section here, maybe an incline loop to the right. So let's have a little look at that. I mean, that's the right sort of idea that I'm going to go for. We can maybe, I mean, what's that, 36? We can make that a little bit bigger as well, just so it proper goes quite slow around that top section. Let's put that in and see how it runs. I mean, that is the beauty of this game, you know, running the coaster whilst you're building it to see if it's going to make it, so to speak. Oh, it's still quite fast. We could actually get away with making that a little bit bigger. I mean, it, it keeps it still intense if it's going slow, but not too much. That could tip it over the edge a little bit. Let's go for that. 34 meters. So 39 down to 9 to 36 to 8 to 34. So let's see how this works. I do like an incline loop. I do really enjoy the one on the swarm. That's better. Nice speed, nice speed. And then we'll bring it straight down here. That's really good. I like that a lot. So I'm thinking the best option here might be to come out of the incline loop straight down into a corkscrew. I mean, if we go into a corkscrew here, it could go quite slow over it and we get quite a bit of hang time for the riders there as well. So think about a corkscrew around to the right. And that looks quite a good sort of size. The coaster will run relatively slow over that as well. I'd imagine at 30, yeah, 30 meters, that should be really slow actually and you should get quite a lot of hang time for the for the riders there let's put that in again and watch it go round the layout's good so far i mean we've got three actual inversions one incline loop i mean d-class incline loop really is an inversion i mean you know technically it is but in a way oh yeah that's nice that's very swarm at thought park style that is let's see what we've got in terms of Helixes, but well, yeah, do, do you class it, you know, as, a, as an inversion? Comment below. I mean, I know technically it is. If we're being 100% technical, then yeah, of course it is. But in general, yeah, because technically it doesn't actually take the riders upside down all the way, does it? If you look at that there, yes, it tilts you at this sort of angle, but you don't actually go all the way around, do you? Which is interesting. So, comment below. I'd be interested to see what you guys think about that one. That would be way too intense because we haven't got enough bank in there. So, again, we'll go over this whole coach with the smoothing tool. Hmm. I don't think we've really got anything adequate we could uh, go for here. I mean, oh, of course, we go for a zero G roll, but that's taking it really far over there. I want to keep it within this sort of area. I mean, we could always try and bend it round and then go into a zero G possibly. Give us something crazy, a vertical inline roll! Woo! <laughs> I don't think so. Now let's, um. That'd be quite nice towards the end of the ride, just like a, a twist around. Now let's go for a bit of a. Uh, just trying to turn this coast around then, so we'll lift up and slowly bank. What I'll we'll try and do is send the coast around underneath. This is where we're going to need the smoothing tool a little bit later on. I mean, let's think about the speed what the coast is actually going at. You know, we can take it up a fair, a fair way because if you look at the speed we're going at here, it's still going relatively fast. So it's a bit, in a way, a bit of an overbank that we're going to put in. doesn't look too bad of course we need to uh, sharpen this up quite a lot I 
do like the idea of having a bit of a bank going on there. I don't think that's quite right on that corner just there. I do really like how accurate you can be though with this coaster editor. I mean, it, it's fantastic. All about just having a bit of a mess about with it, really. <laughs> that looks better. Yeah, that's a lot nicer. So let's go over it with the, uh, the smoothing tool. So you can just change it changes everything a little bit, doesn't it? That isn't really going to do a lot because it's a preset. Uh, just really smoothens out the coaster. It helps a lot, actually. That does. We're getting quite low level at this point now. Again, let's just see how it copes with the speed. Possibly a little bit more banking needed there, but we'll see what we get in the results. and then we can go back to the straight section there. Still got quite a bit of speed on this coaster so far. It's a very it's a fascinating game, it really is. We'll go for another uh, pocket of air time now because obviously it's not going to let me build it too close to the uh, piece of track that's just above it. I like that turn around actually. I love the fact how it comes around that corkscrew into the turn around. Not too fast around there. I think we'll just get away with the bank in there. More air time. Yeah, we'll just get away with that bank in there. It maybe needs a little bit more, but again, we can always come back to that later on. I always click it a few times, because you'll notice for some reason it just seems to keep adjusting it. I've been told not to really use Smooth All, because it actually you know, can take the fun out of your element, so to speak, so we don't want to do that. Layout of this, though, is looking good. It is, of course, we're coming down towards the the big finale of the ride, so to speak. Now, I've got to make a decision. Do I send it back over this side, or do we keep it on that side of the launch? For the purpose of this area not being far away, I think we should probably keep it on that side of the launch. Think about making that track a little bit shorter. And of course, we're going to now start to bend this round Come out of the air time, we'll uh, start to, to twist that round as well. It's air time with a bit of a twist on it. That's what we want, that's the good stuff. Do you want to bank that to 45? Yes, we do. Just keeps it a little bit smoother. I'm pleased with how this is coming out though now, actually. There's going to be a huge theming project this one. There'll probably be a couple of episodes just theming the actual scenery around the coaster. There's not actually going to be much in terms of rock work around this. It is going to be more physical theming. Let's just see how this actually runs. 17 meters, bit of air time. Straight round. I think we need another inversion, don't we? I like that 
kind of swoop we've got going on here. I really like that. And this will straighten back out. I mean, this will interact heavily with the buildings, this part of the coaster. So we'll have a look then what we've got inversions wise for this section. I mean, I quite like the idea of doing a, a zero G roll in this coaster, but I don't think that's quite going to happen unless we send it back down and then up again. I mean, how small could we have a. Can have a small zero G roll, bring it back down, then up again. Nah, I don't think that's going to work quite as well as I'd hope. Inline twist, we can go for. But again, I just don't feel that that's right for that part of the coaster. I mean, the, the ride, we've gone through the main elements of this ride now, it's starting to peter out towards the end, so maybe. Just a good helix. I mean, we want downward helix or something, maybe. Again, there's just not a lot of banking on that. Unless we build our own helix, potentially. Definitely don't want that. Definitely don't want a non in <laughs> You get some really good elements on this, though. I mean, especially if you do struggle with building coasters. You know, you can pretty much use your, your preset things. I would have liked another inversion in here. I'm not sure what I want, unless we do go for another smaller incline loop or half loop. Yeah, that'd be cool. A <laughs> dive loop, maybe. No matter what, unless we send it back down here and then go go into a dive loop potentially, a small dive loop. Not gonna happen, I don't think. Yeah, another little pocket of airtime. We've got a few of these pockets of airtime, haven't we? I suppose it's gonna be a matter of sending it up then into another inversion, isn't it? It's a very time consuming pro process, Planet Coast. I mean, if you wanna get it right and you want it to be rideable and look good, you, you know, you've got to spend time on it, there's no doubt about it. Another loop? <laughs> that actually works, that'd do for an inversion. We could have a small loop, I mean, how small can we get that? Oh, that, that could actually work, I mean, 15 metres into that, maybe? It'd be slow. What's the smallest we can have that? Let's have a look, 24 metres? Is that going to make it? I didn't even think about having a standard loop. I mean, it's just not something I really associate with, with wing coasters normally. I know you can have them. But... So up into more air time. I think it'll make that, you know. Oh, oh, we had a bit of lag then. That actually comes in at quite a nice speed. That's not even too fast. What a way to end the coaster. I mean, the layout of that's nice. It's very... Yeah, very streamlined, which is what I like about it, and I can already imagine the theming possibilities. It's now about bringing it round and, and petering this coaster out. I mean, how many coasters, you know, that go into a, a loop like that right near the end? You know, that, that's a, a really good element. Times to get. You want a banana? You want a banana, anyone? Imagine that on a wing coaster. Somehow, I don't think that would uh, feel quite right. Thank you. Have some sort of overbank. Oh, oh, now we're talking. Even better. What a way to turn the coast around. That'd be nice. Let's see that in action. Oh, oh, it makes it, but it's very slow. How small can we have it? A bit smaller. 22 meters from 24. Wow, that's an impressive machine, that is. I'm feeling a rapids interacting with this. Now I've seen this, I'm thinking, 
We go for a rapids maybe around it. Comment below, what do you think of rapids? Pirate themed rapids. Also track colour, I'm thinking black for this. The swarm. Loving the speed it comes around some of these elements. I've intentionally, as you've seen, made some of these elements really slow. Like they are on wing coach, just so you can really take in that element. Oh, I've just accidentally removed that. <laughs> Around here, towards the station, more airtime, 15 meters up into a loop. God, what a way to end the coaster! Oh yeah, again it's slow, but I'm not complaining about that. I think on wing coasters, it's important actually to have some slow inversions. This helps make it a lot more enjoyable. Do you love a good wing coaster? What's your favourite wing coaster? Also comment that below, it'd be really interesting. I know there's a lot of people out there that aren't big fans of wing coasters. But that's what makes all of us theme park enthusiasts different, isn't it? We all enjoy different rides and, and experiences. And that is what makes being an enthusiast fun. We all enjoy different attractions, don't we? Didn't mean to do that either. <laughs> Trying to straighten this up a bit now. We start thinking about bringing this coast around to the the end section. That's definitely the the big finale, so to speak, for this coaster. It's still going quite fast, though, isn't it? We get a bit more out of it, yeah. In terms of airtime, no more inversions. Unless we go for a cheeky inline twist, but I just, I just think that that's the finale, isn't it? Because you, you get to these two air tunnels, you think, oh, okay, the ride's sort of petering out, it's come to the end, and then you're hit by uh, you lo a loop and a massive overbank like that, you know, so. I like that a lot. Again, let's get the smoothing tool out. I will go over some of the other areas on this just to smooth that banking out and just make it a bit more enjoyable. Track piece is a bit shorter. I love BM. They are a brilliant manufacturer. They're my favourite manufacturer out there, along with, with Mac Rides. I do really enjoy Mac Rides. Plenty of airtime on this coaster. Airtime inversions, you know, it's got everything a, an enthusiast wants, really. So, let's think about how we're going to slow this thing down now. I mean, the coaster's still got a bit more in it, which is good. It's not like it's going that too slow that it's got nothing left in it. Which happens on too many rides out there in the world. My eyes. Also, this will add a bit of length to it. I mean, you can't have a coaster that's too long, really, can you? I mean, yes, you've got rides that, towards the end, start getting a bit ugh. But you never think, you know, oh God, that coaster's way too long. I'd much rather build a, you know, a longer ride, something what more people, you know, can have a, a more lengthy experience on. At the end of the day, when you go to the theme park, you queue up for these attractions, don't you? And you know, the queues get absolutely huge. You, you, you want a long ride? That's what I like about Disney. Most of all, Disney attractions, you know, are, are long rides, aren't they? The support's just gone and disappeared for that, but that isn't too much of a, a, a big worry for me because with how well themed these coasters are going to be, you know, we don't need to worry too much about missing the odd, uh, odd support. Let's actually bring this helix round, then up into the brakes. Where the hell is that going? <laughs> bring that round a little bit more, a little bit more of a tighter helix, actually. That'll be quite intense. Oh, oh it will be quite intense, that will, won't it? Try and make that a little bit bigger. That looks a little bit, a little bit too much. I'll 
obviously we can't have it hitting the the coaster. That's the, the issue, unless we send it up and over there. But then we're raising that height again, which I didn't really want to do. I want to really start to peter this out now and send it round into the brakes. I just get away with that. I don't think that's much different, to be honest, how it was before. But. We'll go with that, and then we can send it up and over the piece of track that we just put in. That will bring it to a nice, smooth ending. Not like that, <laughs> but. <laughs> Well, we could even send it over the station, actually, if we wanted to be do something a bit cooler with it. I always just like looking at the angles when I'm putting in stuff like this. That's why I do a lot of spinning round, you'll notice, when I'm building coasters especially. I like to do a lot of spinning round just to make sure that I've got the angle right and things. We could go for another inversion here and be and be cheeky and, and, and do an, an inline twist or something over the station. Rolls we got the down down here at the bottom. What could we do? Oh, not that. Oh, we have to raise it up. No, I don't really want. No, 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 no. Cancel that idea. I know you all got excited then. I think there was going to be an inversion of the station. I don't think that's quite right. Don't get me wrong, it's got enough speed. But... I don't know. So now's a good point to come back to the station, actually, and think about adding some more station platforming. Oh. Like so. Obviously we want to run this on at least two trains. It's an adequate size station, I think. And now I've done that, We've hit a problem. We could actually send it over the station. You know what? We're going not with an inversion, but I'm going to send it over the station. Ever so slightly. It means I've got some. Uh, Good theming that I've got to do for the station, doesn't it? <laughs> Wasn't going to send it this side of the, uh, of the the launch track, but let's just see how that works. Another bit of airtime. It's actually quite a long coaster, this is, isn't it? it? Takes up quite a large footprint as well. That's very slow coming up to that. Very, very slow. Yeah, this is the better option, I think. Sending it round nicely. Send that into the building at the side. The theming will really make this ride as well. I mean, yes, it's a bit more of a beefy coaster than uh, the RMC, but the, again, the theming, it, it's gonna be absolutely stunning on this. Let's see how this works just around here. 
We made the most of the speed, I think, on this coaster. Oh, that's quite nice, actually. Yeah, over the station. Just a little... Yeah, you, know, you don't need to bank that much at all. It's not exactly going very quick, is it? There we go. Now we can start about thinking about slowing this thing down, breaking it. And of course, getting it back round into the station, which is at seven meters. Small turnaround section here and into the break room. Coast is going to be going very, very slow at this point. Don't need to do too much banking. I like that. Yeah, and straight round into the brakes. Really pleased with that. Really pleased. Of course, we know it's working okay. Because we've tested it as we've been building it, which is <laughs> something I really recommend. Don't really know what I ramble on about when I'm building these coasters, to be honest. I do ramble a lot, don't I? I do a lot of talking. It's not like when I'm theming and I speed bits up. So with the coast, I want to show you it in real time, show you just how long and how much planning goes into it. That, that's a really nice design. I definitely think a Rapids will interact very, very well with this, though. All right, get on to my utilities. <laughs> Linear synchronous motor, magnetic brakes, trim brakes, and a block section. Drive tires. Let's go for some magnetic braking. Slow the train down. Not like he's going to need much slowing down anyway, to be honest. We might even get away with going straight into a, a, a block section there. Yeah, we can. There we go. Oh, look at that. And then if we put it on autocomplete there, it'll literally just send it down a nice little incline. I do like that tool when it comes to making these coasters connect at the end. There you go. That, that works perfectly. Let's use that. That's a really handy tool just to use at the end. Don't use it for the whole thing because it's cheating, but using it to connect up the right at the end, I think that that's that's fine. I do it anyway. Wow. I do it. It's, it's basically a big rectangle, isn't it? Definitely a lot of theming work to be done on this. The next couple of episodes are going to be doing a lot of theme work. I think, actually, let, let's put the rapids in before we theme the actual ride up. Wow. I mean, it runs at a very nice speed, as it is with the launch, but let's let's watch it in action. And then we can always adjust the speed if we want to. I think, considering how fast it goes, the, f the launch isn't that fast, remember, you know? I mean, how much it's getting out of this coaster for the speed. Straight up into the incline loop. It's getting a lot out of the space and the, and the fact that it's not actually got that much of a a launch to it. Yes, we could make this faster, but I'm not going to. I like the speed it runs at. Still not sure on this bank in here, but the coaster isn't actually going that fast, is it? So I'm going to go over it with the smoothing tool as well before we start any theming work, just to sort of sharpen up a few little bits. Very nice. Round into a 360 helix. Again, we don't need to worry too much about the bank in there with it being very slow. Might add a little bit more bank in, but not too much. There we go, round into the brakes. Really pleased with that, really good coaster actually. I think uh, I'm just going to do a bit of tweaking, and then we'll come back and I'll take you along for a ride on it, I think. I'm just going to do a few more bits of 
tweak into the ride. Yeah, and then I'll give you a, uh, a POV I know in which you all like riding on these things. Okay, so I've done a bit of smoothing with the smoothing tool. I've completely gone over the whole coaster. I've done a little bit more banking around a few sections as well, just to make sure that it's ruined as smooth as it can be. So what we'll do then is take you along for the ride, and uh, and let's see what we can get here. So we'll sit on the left-hand side, I think. Here we go. So here's the launch. Straight out of the station into that. There's no sort of pre-area to sort of wait. Straight up into our first elements. Really smooth transitions actually between these inversions, which is really nice. Like I say, it's really just the right sort of speed that a wind coaster should be in my eyes. I don't think these are designed to be really big, thrilling coasters. Into the corkscrew. Again, nice and slow over there, plenty of hand time. Into the bit of a turnaround section. I didn't do any more banking around there. I thought that it'll be okay with the speed it's going. Into some air time, two air time hills there. Straight down into the vertical loop. Oh, that's nice. Round into that overbank, really slow there, crawling round. Into a small little camel there. Straight round. Into the helix. Back up. And again, this is just where it peters out now, round into the brakes. Nice and slow, no real banking. There you go, I think that's a really nice coaster. I'm, I'm pleased with that. For the first steel coaster that I've done inside this park, I think that's running really well. And of course, we're going to be having that run on a two train service, so let's um, get that changed now so we can stop this testing, can't we? So, if you go into operations of the coaster, you can change this, see everything your blocks, your, how you want it to dispatch, your minimum, your maximum waiting time. And of course, we have the number of cars per train, so we'll keep it at 10 actual cars. Let's have it on two trains, there you go, they fit comfortably there in the station. Of course, you won't see those when the theming's done. Just think about the track colour then. Of course, I did say I'm going to have the track black. Which, um, definitely not going to change my decision there. Why can't you change each individual part of the track, which is really cool? There we go. Now, in terms of supports, I'm thinking we go for maybe a grey, dark brown colour. Maybe that's a bit too... It's quite nice, actually. So, we go for that. Yeah, that, that's. Mm, it's a bit too red. That a bit too red. Let's go for that for now. I mean, we can always change this later on. Let's just see how how that looks. Oh yeah, for a pirate wing coaster, that looks really good. I'm pleased with that. Awesome. Right, let's think about moving on this. I'm not going to put the entrance and exit into that just yet. Let's start, let's go straight in. Let's think about where this area is going to go in general. So plotting out the area, so to speak, for the rest of this episode. So what I'm thinking here is, of course, the footpath's going to come round. I want this lake now to sort of expand, a bit like it did down here, but not properly. Here, I want it to expand massively to sort of put the pirate ship on this corner here. We have the footpath, one going round, underneath the coaster, one come around this way and then that will connect back up onto some sort of main path around here. And then we'll think about where this rapids ride is going to go and in the next episode I'll put the rapids ride in. Of course we've got the train line to think about. Yeah, there's a lot to think about with these areas but first off we got onto the terrain editor. Now it's going to be a very different coaster in, in, like this one here. This was actually, you know, had a lot of rock work done to it, a lot of hills and things. This one's going to be very different in that respect. So I want a, a, a big, big lake to be going in here. There we go. Just thinking about the positioning of it and exactly where I want it to go. I want to leave enough room there so we can get a footpath running around. Of course we're gonna sort of connect, connect that up as well. Let's just connect that up for now. I know it'll do it for me automatically, but... Yeah, I can just imagine my pirate ship sitting on this corner of here, you see. You got, if you did a pirate ship, you've got to have it, you know, over water. It's just got to be done, hasn't it? I mean, that's why I can't understand with the blade of Bolton Towers, why that was never done over water in Mutiny Bay. That's nice. And then obviously we can keep that expanding out, can't we then? I'm 
thinking is it will slowly raise that up again. Make, this, make sure this is nice and deep. Of course, if this was a actual real theme park this really wouldn't be a man-made lake it'd be a natural lake that and we decided oh let's build the B&M wing coaster behind it you know let's uh, put a pirate ship on it it'd be a nice natural lake you don't ever understand with Alton Towers if you know Alton Towers quite well theme park over here in the UK where we're from of course their pirate ship is sat in a, a big pit basically up in their Forbidden Valley themed area I've always thought it would work quite well over the water Personally, and then maybe think about that as whether that, that's going to expand off if we want to. We can send that off. In fact, I might put that in now. Yeah, I'm going to. I just decided so this is going to expand off. Changing the size down the bottom, of course, helps there. We'll go for another bridge, a bit like Tokyo Disney Sea. Love to go to Disney Sea and just see it all. Way no pun intended. That works nice. Let's send it. And yeah, why not? Let's send it underneath the coaster there. Getting quite a lot done actually in this episode. Didn't take me quite as long as I thought it would do to do the wing coaster actually. Not a bad build that was it. Not a bad build. This river is going to lead back to some sort of central point. I'm imagining anyway, some sort of central point over over here. That's nice. That is. You know what? I'm going to do it now, folks. I'm going to put a pirate ship in just on the corner, just so I know how it looks. So if we go into, you can see where this area is going now. Hopefully, anyway, I can see where it's going. If you can't, <laughs> that's the, oh, look at that. There you go. Look at the reflection in the water. It's really nice. Okay, so if we go down here onto rides, let's have a look. Victory! That's actually a good name. <laughs> Keep your name suggestions coming in, by the way, for the other rides. So let's think about how we can position this. Don't mind raising it up a little bit. So if we go for about there. I kind of have imagined it, unless we put it right in front of the... So no, that'll swing out quite nice, wouldn't it, over the, over the size. I'll tell you what, we'll leave it there for now. Maybe put it on a bit of an angle. Be the better option with that. Let's, um, let's go for that again. It is rude. On a bit of an angle so it swings out. There, that's the place for it. <laughs> you know when you just, just you work something out and you think, oh, I shall put it, and then you think, right, that's the place for it. That really is right about there. Yeah, that's nice. Oh, I always zoom out because I like to see how it looks for the overall park. You see, if you wonder why I always zoom out, that is why. I'm gonna uh, put my entrance and exit in as well, so we can work this out. Let's um, just get that test in just so we can see what I wanted to see in action. You can really imagine this area now, some more trees, not a lot going on here. Again, really trying to split these areas off. I don't want you to, you know, see these other themed areas from, from the other ones really. Let's just have a look at the impact the coaster makes. Obviously you're going to see probably the top section just here from when you're down in this area, but hopefully not too much. Oh, okay. Oh, that's actually really nice. So if that's the guest perspective. They'll come around this path here. Oh yeah, you can hardly see that coaster because of the... Let's have a little look from a bit further back in the area. To so say you're a guest down here. Oh, you can just see it right in the distance. I mean, that isn't a problem at all. I just didn't want it to be in direct view. I mean, yeah, if you're the guest down here, look, you can just see it 
peeking out in the distance. Yeah, I just didn't want that effect of, oh my god, you know, oh, there we are, we're in the stage with the coaster. I just didn't want that effect of, oh, you know, it's done all this amazing, like, theming work down here and then just ruined it by putting a massive coaster behind it. Didn't want that at all. That's nice. So imagine being on that, you'll be thinking, whoa, I'm going over the water. Of course, we'll theme all this up in the long zoom. Right, let's think about a bit of footpath. Well, that's going to go. We've got the train as well, haven't we? That needs to come around this section somewhere. Of course, we've got one part of the train going over the water there. This part of the train's also got to come up here, hasn't it? So that's also something to actually consider whilst we're building. Choo choo. I think what we'll, what we'll do with the train. Don't want to send it in front of a pirate ship. I think what we'll do there in the long term, we'll actually send it round this side, send the path underneath the train track, and we'll send the train around the back just there. So I'm going to leave that for now. And let's think about the uh, footpath that we're going to put in this area here before we wrap up another episode. Look at that, done quite a bit actually in this episode. Put, built that massive coaster, put my pirate ship in. Love it, it's looking great so far. You saw some sped up footage there I've been putting in the queue line and all this footpath. It looks fantastic now and the area is already really starting to come together. Now as I mentioned there's not really going to be as many hills and things around this area of the park. However, there is going to be a lot of buildings. Now in the next couple of episodes you're going to see me building some sort of castle style buildings around here. I mean it's not going to be a medieval area, it is a pirates area, but I do think that we're going for that sort of stonework effect with this whole area around here as well and that's what you're going to start to see in the next episode along with us building our rapids ride as well so 
That'll be the first thing in the next episode. Before I do all that theming, I'm going to put in a rapid. So I'm thinking the station somewhere up here at the top. Uh, the rapids are going to meander around all this section here and around the back of the area just here as well. Of course, we'll have an access path coming off here, which will lead around to other areas of the park as we build outwards. And the pirate area itself will probably expand onto this little piece of land just here as well, which will just be shy of our main sort of entrance feature, which is going to be down at the bottom here. So it's all really starting to come together then. That's the end of another episode i hope you've enjoyed it here on theme park worldwide keep watching we'll have another video in about another week's time as i mentioned these are pre-recorded at the moment as me and harry are out in florida so make sure you follow the theme park worldwide twitter account at theme park ww and also head over to our facebook page to search theme park worldwide drop us a like while you're there for competitions and live updates and so much more over on facebook thank you very much for watching i hope you enjoyed watching me build this uh, wing coaster and in the next episode it's time to start some Theming. I'm Sean Sandbrook and thank you for watching. See you in the next episode.